Uh, what? Sorry? Could you lift this mouse from here and then figure out if it's working, if it's still working? So if I'm planning to move around the mouse. Yeah. What? No, just click it. Oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah, it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. <sighs> okay, everyone, we better get started. Um, hi, uh, my name is John Byrne. Uh, this is uh, a very short talk about the lessons from two. Uh, w Wikipedian in residence slots I had last year, really, uh, and they were both unusual because they were essentially not in what we normally think of as glam institutions, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. They were both in essentially scientific organisations, uh, so that gave a sort of different aspect. So the two organisations were. The Royal Society, which is the UK's National Academy for the Sciences, that was actually quite low key. It was, it was six months, one day a week. So it only amounted to 28 working days. Uh, and the second one, which overlaps with that slightly, was uh, with Cancer Research UK, who are, uh, are, depending on how you count, the world's largest cancer research charity with uh, annual income and spend of about three quarters of a billion euros, mostly on uh, actually sort of basic science, genetics, cell biology, that kind of thing. So they're very, very uh, tapped into those fields. Uh, so that was in, en it, 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 in total uh, about seven months full time. It was actually four days a week. Uh, so. I've worked before with, with uh, various uh, more typical glams like the British Museum, the British Library and other museums, mostly in London. Uh, these organisations were very different. They had uh, very different activities, very different aims and very different atmospheres. Uh, they were both um, very much concerned with influencing public opinion in their particular areas by uh, producing reports, by uh, producing policy statements and statements to the press. Cancer Research uh, UK was particularly active in that. They had a very large press department, which I was sitting in, and also policy departments. Uh, so they had teams putting out policy information and uh, scientific information to various sectors. It was it was very much targeted, um, and they're very. Uh, if you do a sort of news search on Cancer Research UK, they are constantly being quoted by the press. They've got the newspapers pretty well trained to uh, ask them for comments whenever a cancer story comes up, which is almost all the time. Uh, and they very often people I was working with quite often popped up on TV for very short slots um, and actually the, the you can see that I think even comparing the American and the British press the British press even the sort of Daily Mail end of it is actually much better trained at not uh, the, the, the usual the usual thing is to exaggerate the importance of a breakthrough study that's actually a couple of hundred mice in a laboratory, something's happened, their, their tumours have gone down, the tumours that the doctors gave them, the researchers gave them deliberately, have been reduced by something or other, and, you know, that's a breakthrough. Uh, and really it isn't, and most of those stories, ten years down the line, don't actually result in anything. And I think just comparing the American, the way the American press handle that, and the British press handle that. The British press are actually now much more restrained because they've been kind of trained to go and ask cancer research and then get a nice quote from a scientist saying, you know, this is interesting, but more research is needed, and so on. Um, <coughs> so both the Royal Society and the Cancer Research UK are very high profile within the UK. Uh, in particular, cancer research has a very large website which is divided by the target audience. So they have a whole section of the website that really is mainly intended for 
uh, ep epidemiologists and people with training in medical statistics. They've got other bits that are aimed at cell biologists, other bits that are aimed at patients, and other bits that are aimed at a general public interested in science. So it's all kind of very specific and it's all very well thought through and it has a lot of people working on it. Uh, Royal Society website wasn't like that. Uh, it's a good deal smaller and it's mainly a kind of information house for other stuff happening but in all the sciences. Uh, one glam-like aspect is that the Royal Society has uh, a, a very important collection of scientific uh, books and documents uh, going back to when it was founded in 1660s. So they've got all, they've got all sorts of stuff by Newton who was uh, an early, very early president of the Royal Society. Uh, they've got letters from Van Leeuwenhoek and, uh, you know, Darwin. All the big names were fellows, and they have quite a lot of stuff from them. So that was a sort of glam-like area. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go through everything I did in those two things. I, the big successes... Uh, were releases of images in very small numbers, in fact, not, not uh, the kind of, you know, it wasn't uh, the Royal Society, we've only got, if I can get to it, uh, uh, somewhere I've got it, no. Uh, we've actually only got, uh, I think, about 100, 100 images, something like that. Uh, okay, these are the cancer research ones, which are mostly diagrams like this. So they're very, um, they're, they're, all the images that I got released, in fact, were modern. Oh, you can't see that very well. Uh, so there were several hundred of these uh, patient information uh, images that were released. And they are actually, how do I get this big, who knows, in commons? Uh, I don't think I care. Um, so the good thing about these is they actually have their SVG format, so uh, anyone who knows how can translate the, la the, ca the label information and uh, create a new image in a particular language. And I'm very uh, keen to have some of that's been done into German, but I would love it if other people would take those images. Uh, this is a... <sighs> How do you get common images big? Who knows? I've been through that. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Curse you, video viewer. Honestly, what a rubbish, what a rubbish piece of software that was. Thank you. Um, okay, so the, all of that could be translated and a new file created into. Polish, Dutch, anything you like. Uh, these ones are particular pop, particularly popular because this is a particular stage of a cancer and they come in sets of, you know, sometimes three, sometimes six, depending on the cancer. So uh, I didn't actually, all of, the, all of those have been used in the relevant English cancer article, which I didn't have anything to do with. Uh, it was Keelana, Emily Temple Woods mainly. Uh, because they're, they're very helpful, and we didn't have anything like that before. Um, so those are, those are most of the cancer research images. The uh, Royal Society images were... Uh, I had trouble. In the end, I didn't really get any of the historic manuscripts, and we had to have a special photo shoot for those. Um, somewhere I've got a window... No, I'm not going to bother. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, so almost all the images I got were the official photographs. And the great thing about this is they're now going to do it every year the official photographs of the newly elected fellows. Uh, so on, a, on an ongoing basis, and we actually didn't have very many of those before. They elect about 50 fellows a year. And if you look at earlier years, typically we don't have photos. Or if we do, they're kind of shot, they're sort of 
rather amateurish ones shot on occasions like this, you know, so somebody's at a, at a, at a giving a lecture or something and, and somebody's taken a shot, which often isn't very good. Uh, so we've now got the, the, the official photos and that has resulted in, for the first time, all the 2014 fellows have now got biography articles on the English Wikipedia, whereas 2012, it's still under 50%. Uh, and I think that's very largely because they have photos, because it's obviously much nicer to write an article about someone who's got a photo. So basically, we've got 50 odd mostly men in mostly dark suits. Uh, but nonetheless, they get used pretty well. I mean, all of, those, all of those images are used now. I think it's true to say, or possibly one or two not. Uh, and the great thing is that it, they will keep on doing this without us having to do anything about it, they've now got that uh, rhythm going and uh, they're very shortly due to announce the 2015 uh, crop, so we will see how that, ha how that happens. Um, and they're both getting good, uh, good views for the numbers, you know, uh, particularly the cancer ones, which get uh, 1.3 million a year, uh, a month, uh, just on desktop, uh, yeah? Okay. Uh, so what didn't go so well? Well, in both the organizations, the policy departments you, were very difficult to engage with. Um, despite, you'd think it would be quite attractive to them because they really know their subjects in depth, whether it's uh, uh, something to do with various aspects of cancer and cancer treatment or things like global warming, which the Royal Society do. They, they really have good people who really know the stuff, and they are there to influence uh, public attitudes and public knowledge. So you'd kind of think they'd be, it would be more a case of worrying about whether they were, had conflict of interest when they got involved. But actually, they were very hard to interest. Uh, and I, I can't claim to have had much success in either organization. Uh, training, I did a lot of both staff at the institution and researchers that they funded, basically. Um, the, success, the successes were kind of typical, so, you know, the follow-up has not, the retention has not been fantastic, but I think it's kind of, it was good to sort of spread the word and change attitudes. Uh, content was essentially a thing at CRUC, uh, Cancer Research UK working with the existing medical community of editors. That didn't happen the way it was supposed to by the, by, not by me, but the people who'd been kind of planning the project before I got recruited. They sort of thought that if Cancer Research UK expertise was made available, people would kind of be queuing up to ask questions and want reviews and all that kind of thing. Actually, that didn't really happen. Conceivably, it was because it was the year for the medical editing community, it was the year of Ebola. That was a sort of huge uh, effort and took a lot of resources. But I think that's just not quite the way it works. There just aren't quite enough medical editors. And also, uh, Cancer Research UK could offer reviewing you know, by really high-level people, but actually you have to get an article to a pretty good stage before you can send it to somebody like that. But we did have some successes, and there, it, there was a sort of target of featured articles, which was a bit of a dangerous thing for a Wikipedian in residence, if you ask me, uh, which we haven't quite met yet, but we did uh, get some. OK, I just want to talk, and we also uh, free subscriptions to the Royal Society journals, which was nice. So I just want to talk about the bits of research I did at Cancer Research UK. There were two studies. One of them, I interviewed 30 members of the public um, uh, for a, a total of about an hour. So I asked them to research pancreatic cancer, then uh, tracked their screens as they did, then interviewed them afterwards. So I was interested in why they chose some sites instead of over others and all of that. And they did it forms rating the sites, which I'm going to show you the results of. The other bit was a quantitative research uh, thing for a thousand members of the general public who saw one of three pages on pancreatic cancer 
One was the NHS Choices, which is the most popular patient information site in the UK. One was the Wikipedia page a year ago, and the other was the Wikipedia page after the project had turned it into a featured article. And then they rated the pages. So the results of the first, uh, they were quite comparable. Wikipedia's less trusted than the other big medical sites, and is also found too detailed and technical, and it is a lot more detailed and technical than the patient information sites. Um, in the qualitative study, we came in sixth to seventh of out of eight, uh, and seventh overall, uh, beating WebMD. In the quantitative study, they recognized that the two Wikipedia articles had improved but depending on what quality, not by very, very much. Uh, so the qualitative study, that was the, those were the top eight sites, which were the great majority of the ones that people looked at. So Wikipedia is down there, but actually the scores don't cover a huge range. They're quite close at the top. So in a way, I think that's not too bad a result, but it certainly shows that we're not uh, accepted as well as uh, the, the top sites. Um, the the quality, quantitative study, these, what, what I'm just highlighting here is the improvement in the old Wikipedia page, in, sorry, the new Wikipedia page over the old Wikipedia page. Uh, it was, in terms of the language on this website, was on the website made it easy to understand that score improved 13% to 63 between the, new, the old and the new. Um, do you think there was too much or too little information? Actually, that got worse. More people thought there were too much information by 7%. Uh, I trust the, inf the wee information improved somewhat to 6%, but actually, the last two, I would be likely to use this website again, and I would consult this website if I had to make a decision about my health. Those really didn't move at all, which is sort of interesting. Okay, uh, I'd probably better not do that. Uh, well, this is, this, this is just what I found talking to scientists about Wikipedia, and there's a real kind of generation problem. It was quite common to meet senior researchers who'd edited Wikipedia 10 years ago when they were doing their PhDs and they had more time and they were very pro-Wikipedia, that generation isn't getting replaced to the same degree by people who are now doing their doctorates or postdocs. Uh, so as a result, I think uh, it, actually quite a lot of the really obscure information on or in areas on Wikipedia were quite highly rated by uh, research scientists. I was quite surprised. Uh, but I think they're in danger of becoming, or they are becoming, outdated because the great majority of that editing effort was done sort of 2006 to 2010, and it's not really being replaced. Uh, so that's not really a problem for things like, you know, most glams like art museums, really. Art history doesn't change very much, frankly. Uh, but it's a big problem in cutting-edge science. Uh, and obviously, they're very obsessed by uh, accuracy, uh, particularly in the medical area where, you know, the accuracy can be really serious. Okay, right, thank you. So, I'll stop there. Okay. Unless we've got time for questions now. Maybe okay. we can do the questions after. Okay, okay. okay.